Welcome to Tuesday Cafe with Sean Canan. We're broadcasting live on March 14th from the studios of WMNF Tampa. Later on in the show, we're going to speak with a mother who is moving out of state because she doesn't think that Florida is safe is a safe place to raise her transgender daughter. So I hope you stay tuned for that. First up, we're going to get the latest information about Pinellas County revoking a grant to a Black-run community radio station. Last month, the Pinellas County Commission voted to take away funding that it had approved last year for a radio station that serves Black communities in St. Petersburg. The radio station is called Black Power 96, WBPU 96.3 FM, and it broadcasts from the Uhuru House in St. Petersburg. And joining me now is Akili Anai to talk about Black Power 96 and about events that led up to their grant money being rescinded. Akili is Director of Media and Communications for the African People's Socialist Party. She's also editor of the Burning Spear newspaper and a former St. Pete City Council candidate. Welcome to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Akili. Good morning, Sean. Thank you for having me. I'm glad you could come on the show today. Thanks so much for joining us. So last year, the radio station um, Black Power 96 applied for and was granted money. So before we get into all that news, the recent news, let's just back up a little bit and tell people it, what about, what is Black Power 96? So Black Power 96 Radio is an institution of the nonprofit African People's Education and Defense Fund. And this nonprofit that's existed for, I believe, 27 years um, has the mission to serve um, the Black community and defend the human and civil rights of the Black community um, in the form of education, healthcare, and economic development. And so this radio uh, project really was um, a, uh, you know, something that was necessary to be able to provide a vehicle and a platform for the South Side Black community in St. Petersburg, but also to a broader African community and population throughout the world. And so um, this station has been around now for six years. We first went live on air in 2017 and, you know, have been the venue to provide a space for cultural performers, artists and musicians, um, biz local small businesses with small advertising budgets through our underwriting and business support programs and has been an opportunity for people to learn skills that they normally would have to pay thousands of dollars for in a college classroom to learn how, you know, basic skills of engineering and radio broadcasting to be able to have their own show, um, as well as having emergency alerts for things happening in the community or, you know, weather alerts and COVID, you know, when COVID was hitting to be able to serve as the vehicle that would be able to provide the insight and information necessary to protect and defend our community, which is what APDF has set out to do. And I imagine that I think you broadcast on the internet as well, but tell us about your FM signal when people tune in their radios to 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg about about what's the range where can people get black power radio. So it's about a 10 mile radius. It's in Southside St. Petersburg and is a low power FM station. Um, and uh, it covers like the majority of the South Side, which has historically and is presently still the largest concentrated black population in the city of St. Pete. And it also reaches places uh, like downtown and it even uh, gets a, a signal um, as you start crossing the Skyway. So, you know, from uh, those different uh, areas, the, the, ge the geography of St. Petersburg, this is where, um, you know, it's hitting. And, but we also have a radio app. So like you said, it can be listened to online, downloaded in uh, through Black Car 96 radio app and can be heard uh, virtually anywhere. So. Our guest is Akili Anai, Director of Media and Communications for the African People's Socialist Party. I'm Sean Canan, and you're listening to Tuesday Cafe, broadcasting from WMNF in Tampa. Last year, the radio station Black Power 96 applied for and was granted money by the Pinellas County for from federal funds, the American Rescue Plan Act, that's COVID-19 relief money. What were these funds for and how much was the grant for? So uh, the particular grant that we applied for, Small Purchases uh, Capital Improvement Grant, um, was we had applied and won uh, almost 37000 I think it was like $36,800 that had been awarded to Black Pro 96 Radio uh, to improve equipment and functioning within the radio station itself. And as you've mentioned, these were uh, federal funds, uh, COVID relief uh, dollars, um, that uh, in what was called ARPA. Um, and so, you know, that's what um, we were, we put an application for. We ranked four out of 55 applications 
um, you know, uh, by the 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 granting uh, institution. Well, the the agency that was subcontracted to carry out the grant process had recommended us uh, to the Pinellas County Commission. The commission actually voted to approve the funds um, uh, late last year uh, before this February 14th vote that they took to revoke those resources. And that vote in February that you're talking about, I guess, was um, instigated perhaps by Republican County Pinellas County Commissioner Chris Latvala. He suggested that the funding was cut. Well, um, first he, compl- he you know, he criticized the, the Uhuru Group, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, but then later he said he, the, his explanation was the cut because he thinks that radio equipment is not a good use for COVID-19 relief funds, that it should go towards social services to help people. But earlier you, you mentioned to me that this was a capital improvement grant. Correct. And and when we look at the other awardees uh, that did did not have their funds revoked, I mean, it's for capital improvement funds. I mean, it was for equipment and secure cyber, you know, security uh, equipment and things of that nature. So clearly this is not something that was done because he has some belief that these resources should be used for something else. The grant was for capital improvement funds and none of no other person's funding was revoked. So uh, despite the fact that they also are requesting um, capital improvement. So this is clearly a very politically motivated attack. And so let's get to that part right now. The uh, Black Power 96 is closely affiliated with the Uhuru movement. It, it broadcasts out of the Uhuru house on 18th Avenue South in South St. Pete. What, what is the connection with the Uhuru movement? And maybe you can start with just saying, what, what is the Uhuru movement for people who might not know? Yeah, the Uhuru movement is an organization that's been around for 50 years that has you know, fought for and defended the rights of black people to have self-determination and power over our own lives. And that you know, any um, person who you know, has an understanding about what it means to be a dignified human being, um, you know, has an interest in having power to be able to feed, clothe, and house themselves and to take care of their community. And this is something that the black community just wants to be able to have the ability to do. And that's what the Uhuru movement has fought for, economic development in the hands of the black community. It was founded by, Um, Chairman Amalia Chatella. Amalia Chatella was born and raised uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, and really led, you know, the movement here when we talk about the civil rights movement and, uh, you know, the Black Power movement of the 50s and 60s, the chairman, Amalia Chatella, he was in the mix of all of these things. So this is what the Uhuru movement is. Again, it's existed for 50 years, not just in St. Petersburg, but throughout the world. And um, the and so yes, the Black Power 96 Radio um, is affiliated with the Uhuru movement, and it's really important for us too because and we can see now the the significance of an institution like this where the Uhuru movement has access to because when we look at the assault that's being made right now in education on history being denied you know, from people. The fact is, we have to be able to have a platform for the Black community to tell its history, to tell its story, and to have a vehicle for the people in the community to use to be able to put out their own voice. And the fact is that these major corporate-owned radio stations don't allow us that opportunity on the one hand. And again, we have the situation where there's a constant attack historically on Black people for the rights to free speech, the right to freedom of association, and the right to freedom of assembly. So we have to have our own institutions institutions, rather than asking for someone else to do it for us, we want to do it for ourselves. So this is what the radio station then becomes for our community. So this is who the Uhuru movement has been, a struggle to be self-determining, to do for self. We don't want to be welfare recipients. We don't want to be at the mercy of the local government. We want to be able to do for self. That's what the movement has always strived for. And so that's what Black Power 96 Radio really represents doing for self. And, um, you know, so that's, this is the relationship, the uh, affiliation, and yes, we are able to broadcast the speeches of Chairman and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and, you know, others, and, you know, again, it's just a really important institution where the Black community now has the ability to exercise these so-called rights that we're supposed to have as citizens of this country. Our guest is Akili Anai, Director of Media and Communication for the African People's Socialist Party. And we're talking about Black Power 96, a radio station, a community radio station, Low Power FM in South Side of St. Pete, broadcasting to a lot of parts of St. Petersburg, of course. And I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe, broadcasting from WMNF in the Tampa studios here. And we're talking about when the funding was cut, there was a grant that was awarded by Pinellas County, and then it was cut kind of abruptly this February, last month. 
And so get into the politics. What was said about why the funding was cut that has nothing to do with that if the fact that it was for infrastructure that it, that leads you to believe that politics was involved in getting this funding cut? Yes. Yeah, so, um, well, I want to say that on February 9th, before they had this meeting on the 14th, they had a meeting where they really interrogated the uh, agency that they subcontracted to carry out this process um, and asking them how could this organization be selected. And the arguments that they were making had nothing to do with what the qualifications and requirements were in the grant itself. And um, it was based on Chris, uh, as you mentioned, Latvala, um, uh, who sits on the commission and also joined in with him was Renee Flowers, um, who has, you know, historically betrayed and, you know, have, you know, just anyway, this is something that, you know, we recognize as forces who have always attacked the black community and uh, specifically the Uhuru movement has who has been trying to make this stuff happen for our community um, in where they won't. And so uh, they, you know, spearheaded really this attack, you know, citing, I mean, real slander, uh, citing the recent FBI raids that were made on um, the Uhuru movement on July 29th of 2022. Uh, they were, you know, again, slandering, you know, the Uhuru movement, uh, saying things like, you know, being affiliated with, even though this was something they could not prove, uh, being anti-Semitic and, you know, all of these other kinds of accusations and basically it boiled down to, well, they've criticized our friends and our colleagues. And this is something we have the right to do. We have a right to have a different opinion than the for, than the Republican uh, uh uh, public uh, Pinellas County Commission, you know, we have a right to, to have a difference of opinion. And so, yes, we've had a difference of opinion uh, with these forces on these questions uh, regarding their colleagues and whoever. And so this was really exposed in that February 9th meeting saying that no organization affiliated with the Uhuru movement should ever be considered for funding. This is what Latvala says. And, um, and you know, Renee also says, well, my organizations weren't funded. But this isn't about that. This is whether or not APDF met the requirements of the grant, just like everybody else. And a ranking of four out of 55 applications says they met the requirements. And, and, and so that February 9th meeting, though, revealed the real political basis for the revoking of the funds. Our guest is Akili Anai, Director of Media and Communications for the African People's Socialist Party. And we have a couple more minutes left with you, Akili, but you, we're going to get into a little bit more detail about some of the things that you just brought up. And that is, uh, I guess, maybe to set the, the stage for all of this, in early July of last year, a man with a flamethrower set fire to the flag flying over the Uhuru, Uhuru House. And then shortly thereafter, there was a raid by federal agents in July uh, on the Uhuru movement's and and they the the FBI said it had to do with the Uhuru movement's alleged connections to a Russian national who was accused of working with U.S. groups to spread pro-Russia propaganda and interfere with elections. There have been no new criminal charges since the indictment last year of that Russian national, whose his name is Alexander Ionov, and the FBI is saying that Ionov off, offered assistance and campaign finance to a, a candidate who was running. Uh, with the Uhuru movement at for St. Petersburg, is that are they talking there about Jesse Neville running for mayor a few years ago? And what can you say about all of those allegations? Yeah, so they're talking about uh, both Jesse and myself. Um, we've been characterized as what they call unindicted co-conspirators, so not yet indicted, um, uh, you know, conspirators. And um, they're claiming, as you've mentioned, um, that our election here in 2017 and in 2019, uh, when we ran, which put forward a platform of reparations to the Black community, the first that was ever done in this country, um, that this was some plot of Russia. And we've, you know, first of all, want to just say that those allegations are it's absolute bogus. It's a lie, but we don't even need to say that because it's absurd. The Uhuru movement, as I mentioned, has been here for 50 years, forwarding the struggle, and we've gone to every arena. We've tried to use up any amount of democratic space that's been made available to our people to be able to make this struggle. And one of those spaces was the electoral process. We fought and died for the right to vote, but we didn't just fought for the right to vote. We fought to be able to participate in the electoral process, which is what we did in 2017. And we're, and, and so what's, we're, and now what's being accused is that black people, first of all, don't have the ability or, or wherewithal to know that we're oppressed. And, and then we don't have the ability to struggle. Somebody else has to tell us from Russia 
that, you know, we are oppressed and this is how to struggle. So not only is it bogus, but it's racist to say that black people don't have the ability to do this because we did in 2017, we ran for office, we put forward these critical questions. So I just wanted to, um, to say that and yeah, on uh, February, um, not, not February, July, as you mentioned, July 2nd, somebody comes out to the Uhuru House in broad daylight with a military grade flamethrower and torches the red, black, and green flag, which represents the self-determination and the identity of Black people, you know, that I've been discussing up to now. And in any other ordinary circumstance, if somebody came out and torched the, um, the, the, the red, white, and blue flag that waved, you know, just down the street, we'd be looking at a whole different situation. We'd be looking at a hate crime which was not the situation on July uh, July 2nd. And then July 29th, the FBI comes in in very violent military raids in both St. Petersburg and in St. Louis, holding the chairman and members of our movement at gunpoint, stealing our laptops, our phones, files from our buildings, you know, sectioning off the Uhuru House here in St. Pete. And, you know, for six hours kept this building on lockdown, covering up security cameras so you could not see what they were doing and the extent of the damage. And, and stealing you know, um, material from this uh, building as well. And uh, as you've mentioned, no criminal charges have come yet, but there are serious indications that they intend to you know, bring those charges and indict Chairman Molly Shetella, as well as myself, Jesse Neville, as you mentioned, and um, another one of our comrades, Penny Hess, um, and others you know, who uh, you know, are, has this threat of indictments looming overhead. And when we look at the real basis for this, it's not because of Russia, because the U.S. government is not going to St. Petersburg, Russia. They came to St. Petersburg, Florida, in the impoverished Black community to make this attack. It's about Russia? No, it's about the Black community, and it's about the Uhuru movement, which has had, had the audacity to fight for the Black community, despite the kinds of threats of imprisonment and assassination that we've seen historically. So when this Russian national, Alexander Ionov, came to you and offered assistance and campaign finance, what was your response to him? I, I want to say very clearly, we have never accepted money resources for our electoral campaign. That was a grassroots campaign that people, everyday people, working people contributed to. I mean, we you're looking at a situation where we were running in a race where the mayoral candidates collectively raised over a million dollars one of the most expensive electoral campaign mayoral uh, races in history. We were a grassroots campaign. Jesse and I combined made, I think, something like $14,000. That's That was the people's money that came to support these campaigns because the people believed in what we were saying. So we didn't have the backing of the lobbyists and the super PACs and all that kind of stuff. We didn't have that. I don't know what the paper trail is for those million dollar candidates, but I know that our grassroots campaign that raised $14,000, that's some that, that's supposed to represent some kind of Russian interference. $14,000, that's that's kind of sad, you know, if if this is what the allegations are. So, you know, again, we did not those allegations, that is false. It is a lie. It is bogus and they they can't they won't be able to prove that, but, you know, that's another story, but the, I just wanted to be able to say that. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Akile. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. Akile Anai is Director of Media and Communications for the African People's Socialist Party. Akile is also editor of the Burning Spear newspaper and a former St. Petersburg City Council candidate.